Bubbly housing news, June 2021. Is the housing boom about to bust? Every woman and their dog is telling us to throw caution to the wind and join the property market frenzy. Prices will keep rising, they reckon, because interest rates are so low and there's all that, those new taxes on the way. So take a deep breath and borrow to the hilt to buy that dream house that will otherwise be permanently out of reach. Remember the worst days of the coronavirus lockdown last year? We couldn't buy or sell houses that easily. Auctions as we knew them weren't allowed. So a slingshot started to get loaded as home buyers delayed their plans. According to ABS Home Loan data, there were 3,600 fewer housing loans in the June quarter in Victoria than the year before. In total, more than 11,300 housing market transactions got put on the back burner during the last half of last year. Prices fell, as did the average home loan. That slingshot was pulled back even further by ultra-low interest rates, not to mention six months of lockdown-induced household saving, which was 12% up on the same time the year before. Once the lockdowns ended, the slingshot fueled by that pent-up demand backed by all those subsidies and savings got unleashed and started what has become a gigantic boom. Loans soared by 38% in the March quarter, as did prices, but at a lesser pace, and that has continued through to today. A surge in buyers, especially those keen to escape from generation rent, caught everyone by surprise. Demand trumped supply and prices roared, encouraging existing owners to offer their houses for sale at inflated values, which they partly used to pay more for another dwelling, giving that slingshot even more oomph than before. Slingshots eventually run out of energy, and that is what will happen sometime during the second half of the year. Property markets cannot keep going gangbusters if the population is falling, which is what has been happening since the September quarter of last year. The state budget reckons growth won't return until the first half of 2022, and even then it will be at a slow pace by the standards of the past 25 years. The price slowdown will ripple through the private rental apartment market, which is already under stress, and eventually seep into the detached owner-occupied segment at the centre of the boom. There is no sign of a population bounce anytime soon. The federal government has failed to speedily roll out the jab, making it impossible for large numbers of people to arrive in or leave the country. So now is not the time to be listening to every woman and their dog urging you borrow up big and pile into a red-hot property market. Give it a couple of months and you could be picking up a nice little bargain instead of buying an expensive dump today at the peak of a property boom. House prices keep on booming, but for how long? The extraordinary surge in house prices continues to roll along. This is despite there being no population growth and a strong rise in the construction, which is adding significantly to the number of new dwellings. For the moment, it seems that low interest rates, a strong recovery in the labour market, and demographic changes as a flood of first home buyers leave their rental properties or their parents' houses are behind the price surge which has been evident since September 2020. According to CoreLogic, house prices rose 2.2% in May. Since the end of September 2020, just eight months ago, prices have risen 13.9% in Sydney, 12.3% in Brisbane, 11% in Adelaide, 10% in Perth, and 9.7% in Melbourne. The price gains in Canberra, Hobart and Darwin, and in regional cities and towns have been similarly strong since the latter part of 2020. It is a tremendous boom no one saw coming. That said, gains of this magnitude never last long, and there are signs of a cooling already in what has been a, str a super strong market. When will the property price boom end? Any long-run view of house prices boils down to relatively straightforward supply and demand dynamics. Demand comes from population growth, and supply in this instance is simply the addition to the number of dwellings due to construction. In Australia right now, with international borders closed and likely to stay that way for at least the next year, population growth is very low. In the September quarter 2020, the latest data, 
uh, population actually fell by 4,200 compared to a rise in the same quarter of 2019 of 106,800. The building approvals data point to around 175,000 additional dwellings being completed during 2021, with a similar number hitting the market over 2022. With population growth stalled, who will buy these dwellings when they come onto the market? Research from Westpac shows that even with a reopening of the borders in the middle of 2022, as assumed in the recent budget, there will be a small surplus oversupply of dwellings during 2021, which will build to a large oversupply of around 120,000 dwellings in 2022 and 150,000 in 2023. If the border reopening is postponed or involves small numbers of new immigrants when the borders reopen, the oversupply would be larger. Picking the timing of turning points in the massive Australian housing market is impossible, but in coming months there should be a material cooling in house price growth as the supply surge crashes into the demand drought. By year's end, there should be clear weakness in house prices. At the same time, auction clearance rates are easing in both Sydney and Melbourne, which points to some buyer fatigue starting to emerge and or re unrealistic price expectations from sellers. Either way, the turning point for house prices is about now. The big question is whether prices merely stabilise or start to head lower. Australia's housing market in a triple crisis, new report finds. Australia's economy is in a triple crisis, prompting calls for a royal commission into the future of housing. The reason why? Because Australia's property market is going so well. When the pandemic broke out, economists warned prices were going to fall 20 to 25 per cent. Now we're seeing prices rising 20 to 25 per cent, Professor Chris Leishman said. The fact that commentators switch their predictions so quickly shows how unstable the housing market is. The report, titled Housing – Taming the Elephant in the Economy, interviewed a panel of 87 experts and has been a year in the making. Among its findings were that the number of homeowners under the age of 35 have halved since 1995, with most properties concentrated in the hands of 65-year-olds or older. Professor Leishman said he is seeing evidence that people under 35 are giving up on buying a house as a result. According to the research, home ownership is now out of reach for any Aussies under the age of 35. Australia is one of the most indebted developed countries, beating the US, UK and Canada. The inequality gap is widening as the housing market continues to surge. The housing sector is fueling a problem threefold, creating an unstable economy, generating inequality and perhaps most surprisingly, reducing productivity. When the economy is booming, we see housing prices accelerate. That's the bit we already knew. In the report, we actually asked the question, is there a feedback loop the other way? They indeed found a reverse feedback loop. Expensive houses are driving young professionals from the city into the outer suburbs or the regions to, a, to afford a house. As housing markets get more and more expensive, more productive workers are displaced. The report's authors are calling for a royal commission into housing and to expand the Reserve Bank of Australia's responsibilities to include house prices. We think the RBA's remit should be wider. It should include the housing market. He's particularly concerned about interest rates, which are currently at record lows. It wouldn't take very much for a shift in interest rates to cause a great deal of harm in the housing system. The report's lead author, Professor Duncan McLennan, said something needs to be done. The recent explosion in house prices brings a fresh and troubling dynamic. Rampant price growth has returned to the larger cities and is now spreading to regional Australia. This is in part due to the pandemic fueled work from home revolution, but is also because so many younger Australians can no longer afford the life they want as homeowners in the larger cities. Australia's regulators are preparing to intervene in the property market as house prices explode and New Zealand mounts its own crackdown. The risks posed by surging Australian house prices and household debt have now grown too large to ignore, and regulators are preparing to stage a possible intervention. 
Speaking on Thursday, the RBA expressed alarm at the pace of new lending as buyers tried desperately to keep up with the hot market, and revealed the central bank was actively weighing up what steps it might take next. I don't think it's in the country's interests to have an extended period where credit growth is running way ahead of growth in our incomes, particularly given the high levels of debt. We're not at the point where we're actively considering implementing any initiatives in this area, but we're doing the preparation for what might happen, what we might do if credit growth was accelerating. It's the strongest indication yet the RBA has given it would intercede if pressed by Australia's seemingly insatiable appetite for property, nor is it alone in recognising the pace of lending may be unsustainable. Since October, property markets have bounced, accelerating in 2021. Month on month, lending increased to record-breaking levels, with $1 billion now flowing into the property sector every single day. The enormous growth has been enough to push the average New South Wales home to break the $1 million mark for the first time. It marks Australia as an exemplar of a trend being witnessed across developed markets as quantitative easing and large-scale stimulus pump up asset prices, especially home values. Whether or not the property market is already in a bubble is a matter of opinion, but valued at $8.1 trillion and responsible for the majority of the nation's wealth, risks within the property sector need to be managed carefully. This week, calls were made for a royal commission to tackle what experts consider to be a runaway market. Government policies, meanwhile, marketed as affordability measures, have been criticised by economists as exactly the policies that help inflate demand and drive more buyers into the market, posing further risks. But the regulators have been watching carefully, and it appears like they're almost ready to move off the sidelines to get involved.